To discuss this now, we're joined by former Newsround presenter John Craven, who I looked up to when I was a teen, and the <laughs> deputy editor of Sugarscape website, Lindsay Foley, which is aimed at teenage girls. First, though, let's take a look at one famous TV moment when Harry Enfield's character, Kevin Patterson, became a teenager. Happy birthday to me! Happy birthday, Dick! Goom! Goom! Kevin? Goom! Are you all right, Dick? Are you good? Darling, he's losing the power of rational thought. And the use of his arms. He's, he's become, become a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay, was that ever fair? Funny, but was it ever fair? Very funny, but I think hugely unfair. I think teenagers get a lot of bad press um, these days, but I think actually, deep down, not at all. The True. thing is, John, teenagers who be watching that now, they won't have seen that at the time. Yeah. I remember no. it, and they'll be thinking, that's we're nothing like always, that these days. Yeah, I think there's always been a bit of teenage angst, yeah. all those ho hormones kicking in and things, you know. Uh, but they do get, you're right, uh, especially the tabloid press, want to portray teenagers as the awkward generation, you yeah. know, the kicking against the parents and everything else. Uh, and I don't think that's true. And, and certainly, uh, this report, uh, puts today's teenagers in a, in, a, in a wonderful light. You know, they're caring. Uh, they want a lot of them want jobs that are going to benefit other people. Uh, they're very uh, community conscious. Uh, they're worried that they don't have enough confidence to face the job market, which is getting increasingly complex these days. That's interesting. I mean, you say they're worried about that. They're community conscious. Is this Lindsay a reaction to the recession and its effects that? many teenagers are growing up with now. Yeah, I think it's harder harder than ever for teenagers at the moment, especially trying to get into employment. Um, but I think, you know, in terms of the recession, that kind of thing, the internet, the invention of the internet and social media, it's so important, it's so integral to teenagers' lives, and they're so much more and better informed than ever before. Um, so really, it's, nat it's a natural reaction, I think, really, to be more community-focused. I mean, I became a teenager in Margaret Thatcher's late 80s, and, I, you know, you sort of wonder how that may have uh, changed me. John, you were a teenager what, in the well, I was, 1950s. I, I was one of the first teenagers, I think, in the late 50s, because... Um, Commerce, stylish as well. business, real, uh, yeah. But business realised that there was such a thing as the teenage market then, and so uh, and everything burst at that time on the teenage scene. You know, we stopped buying ballads, we stopped buying seventy eights, we bought forty fives. Elvis Presley arrived, James Dean, uh, Rock Around the Clock, all that sort of stuff. You know, it, life changed forever for teenagers in the late fifties. Uh, we had a great time, and also, we had jobs. There was no problem in getting jobs. I went straight from school to a, an apprenticeship. And like millions of other teenagers, I never had to worry about where I was going to look for a job. You know, it was probably a job for life if you wanted it. Well, there were millions of you because you were the baby boomer generation. And, as, and now, as that generation is ageing, Lindsay, it's up to today's younger people, Generation X like us and the teenagers of today, who are going to have to pay for them going to the future. Does that come up as, as you know, concerns of your website viewers? Um, I think yes. I think that's always something, especially when it's covered so broadly in the media, I think it's always something that people are concerned about um, looking forward, definitely. And do you remember what you were like as a teenager? Because, again, we have a picture. Definitely. I mean, I, don't, I think teenagers, it's natural to look not too far into the future. Um, I think you're looking more immediately and kind of... But I don't. I think now, specifically now, you don't look at jobs when you're thinking about employment as something that you're going to do forever, which is something that they've sort of found in the survey. Definitely, yeah. it's kind of that you can have yeah. a go at something, and if it works out for you, then that's great. But you can change, chop and change. And that's a good thing, I think. Yeah. You know, you're not lumber with the same job forever. You can switch around a bit as Definitely. long as you've got the confidence. I mean, you, you, to, to apply for jobs. You both got into journalism, as yeah. it happens. I mean, we saw were you petting a like a wallaby or a kangaroo there. It was, has what you've gone into changed from what you wanted? when you were a teenager? I'll ask you, Lindsay, first. Well, to be quite honest with you, actually, when I was a teenager, I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do. And I went to university because I thought that would probably give me a bit of an idea, and it did. Yeah. But it's kind of, as you grow up, I think you get more of an idea of what you want to do, and it comes from these experiences at uni or at school, and they kind of develop and change, definitely. John, very quickly, the other thing about teenagers is following their, in their parents' footsteps. Is that true of your daughters? Uh, no. No, it's not. <laughs> well, they're not teenagers, my daughter. I've got grandchildren now who are teenagers. Uh, and as yet, they're not showing any sign of uh, 
an interest in journalism or broadcasting. So that doesn't quite resonate uh, in, in the uh, Craven family. We've had a few uh, messages on this. Devona Eastbury on Facebook. I'm very proud of my 14-year-old son. He's very ambitious, more ambitious than me. He wants to be a paramedic. Best of luck to him. Deborah Gregory on Facebook. My two eldest are much higher flyers than their father. I hope he's not watching. One wants to be a top financier, the other an architect. I mean, the sky's the limit when it comes to ambition, even more so perhaps with this generation. And also, if, if, if they are concerned about lack of confidence, well, NCS run this fantastic course. It only costs £50 a head. Uh, during the summer holidays, uh, they learn confidence. They go on outward bound courses as well. Uh, and there's still some places left. About 40,000 teenagers are going on the course this summer. And if, you, if they want any details, what do they do these days? They go to Google. Google it, get the information, go on the course and get some confidence and have fun. John, many thanks indeed. Lindsay, thank you to you. How did I do? Because I was trying to follow in your footsteps, of course. <laughs> Doing all right, you think? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was good. Not too many. It?